Hello microbiologists. Today we are going to be contrasting prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells in a very graphic way. We're going to be coloring them and we're going to be making a Venn diagram to show what the similarities and differences are between the kinds of cells that make up living things. So to begin, we're going to label what's eukaryotic and what's prokaryotic. In the coloring pages, we have two eukaryotic cells and we have one prokaryotic cell. There are more than two kinds of eukaryotic cells, but I'm going to focus on the animal cell and the plant cell. On the Venn diagram, you also want to label one side prokaryotic and one side eukaryotic. With our Venn diagram, we're going to start with the prokaryotic cells, and we're going to go back and forth between the Venn diagram and the coloring. So when we look at the prokaryotic cell compared to the eukaryotic, the prokaryotic cell is much simpler. You only see a couple of things inside of it, whereas there are a lot more things inside the eukaryotic cell. This is because prokaryotic cells evolved much earlier than eukaryotic cells. They evolved about 3 billion years ago, and it took almost 2 billion more years before eukaryotic cells evolved. Those came around a billion years ago. So the prokaryotic cells are much older, they are much simpler, they are always unicellular. So only bacteria are prokaryotic and bacteria always exist as individual cells. These are much, much smaller. So even though in the diagram I made them look similar in size, prokaryotic cells are at least 100 times smaller and up to 10,000 times smaller than eukaryotic cells. The next thing that's unique about prokaryotic cells, and you can see that now I've color coded it using a green marker, is that prokaryotic cells have free floating DNA. So this is the genetic material of the prokaryotic cells. That is called a nucleoid, and it's just one big piece of DNA that's in a massive tangly ring. They also have these little things called plasmids, but for now we're not gonna worry about them. So their DNA is not in a nucleus. They don't have a nucleus and their DNA is circular. Those are very unique things about prokaryotic cells. And then the last thing that I wanna mention about them that makes them unique is they are lacking the things that I've colored orange in the eukaryotic cells. Those are called mitochondria. We're gonna get into mitochondria more in a moment, but you should know that prokaryotes have no mitochondria. At this point, you should have filled in the prokaryotic side of your Venn diagram, and it's just all the things we just went over. And next, we're going to go to what makes the eukaryotic cells unique. So some of the things that are unique about eukaryotic cells are obvious from what we talked about with prokaryotic cells. If prokaryotic cells are older, obviously eukaryotic cells evolved much more recently. They only evolved about a billion years ago. The earliest ones came about a little more than a billion years ago. Plant and animal cells, it was less than a billion years ago. They're also much more complex, so you can see far more organelles inside of them. And as I already said, they're much, much larger than prokaryotic cells. These are always unicellular, single-celled, but most eukaryotic cells make up multicellular organisms like us. We have about 70 trillion cells inside of us and they're all eukaryotic. And plants have huge numbers of cells. It's not always true, they can be unicellular like amoebas and yeast and amoebas are examples of eukaryotic cells that are single celled, but they're often multicellular. One of the most important things that eukaryotic cells have that prokaryotic cells don't is a nucleus. So the DNA in a eukaryotic cell is stored inside of a nucleus, which has a membrane. And I've colored it the same color as the DNA. So the DNA is free floating here, but now the DNA is bound inside of something. Another difference is the prokaryotes have round DNA, circular, but eukaryotic cells have linear DNA, meaning it's a straight line. It's in chromosomes inside of the nucleus, but those chromosomes do have ends. And in a prokaryotic cell, there is no end, it's just a circle. Another special thing that eukaryotic cells have are the mitochondria. And I think the mitochondria are like the coolest part of the cell. They're the powerhouse, but they're actually something that was a prokaryotic cell. The theory is that when the very earliest eukaryotic cells evolved, 
these prokaryotic cells got inside of them and they developed the symbiotic relationship. So mitochondria are actually ancient bacteria that live inside of every one of our cells. They help eukaryotic cells by making energy and the eukaryotic cell helps the mitochondria by providing it with a source of food and a home to live in basically. So all eukaryotic cells have mitochondria that produce energy. There are some differences between plant and animal cells. So this is a plant cell. You can see it's sort of squarish in shape. Um, plant cells have a cell wall, whereas animal cells do not. I did the cell wall in a darker color. And prokaryotes also have a cell wall. Plant cells also have chloroplasts, which is what gives them the green coloration. So I colored the chloroplasts a green color. Animal cells also have a couple unique things. They have these things called centrioles that help with cell division. We're now done talking about the things that make eukaryotic cells unique. The final thing we're gonna talk about is what all these cells have in common. So I finished coloring my cells, I'll go through some different things, but we're gonna start out with cell theory. They are all cells, and cell theory has three parts. Part number one, cells are the basic unit of life. All living things are made of either eukaryotic or prokaryotic cells, but you can't have life if you don't have cells. I think that's really fascinating because what it means is that viruses are not alive. So viruses aren't prokaryotic or eukaryotic, they aren't made of cells, and therefore they are technically not a living thing. So number one was they're the basic units of life. Number two is they make up all living things. It's a little bit redundant, same idea. Number three is that all cells come from other cells. So all cells have a parent cell that they divided from. Another thing they have in common is all cells have DNA. So they all have DNA. It's different whether it's in the nucleus or not, but they have DNA as their genetic material. They all also have these things called ribosomes. The ribosomes in my diagram look almost like tiny old fashioned computers and I colored them pink. All cells have ribosomes because you need ribosomes to make proteins, and cells are protein machines. Another thing they all have in common is they all have a cell membrane. So I did that in a pink marker, but every cell has a membrane. And the final thing is they all have cytoplasm. I colored the cytoplasm a pale yellow, and the cytoplasm is a fluid that holds all the organelles in it and helps a cell hold its shape. Now you should have the middle of your organizer filled in as well. So that's a basic overview of what all kinds of cells have in common, as well as ways in which they're different from one another. I hope the video and the coloring and Venn diagram helped you better understand this really foundational biological concept.